Hey, Stephanie. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Good. Cool. Okay. Not a message from y'all. So sit on your toes if you can. I don't know if you can see mine. Try to give them a little smile. Or if you have a tennis ball, feel free to roll out your feet a little bit. I'm trying to make it so you can see mine better. Get our feet woken up a little bit this morning. So I'm actually like moving my little pinky toes out so that they get a little stretch. And if this is too much, you can lean forward or just massage your feet out. Just something to get the feet stimulated a little bit this morning. Hope everybody's well. Oh, pupper dogs. <sighs> We're gonna do some arm work today too. And you don't need any weights for it, but I have some little, I think they're only two pound weights. So if you did something for weight, I don't know, you could even grab a canned good or something. Oh gosh, here he is. And then shake the out a little bit. Do you not have your video on? What's that? Do you not have your video on? I do. Can y'all see me? I can. I, I see can. Let me try to connect again. See if. Yeah, something's going on with yours. Hopefully, you can figure it out. So come seated and try to get up right on your sit bones for a nice tall spine. And we're just gonna warm up the arms a little bit. So um, let's take them to our heads, right at the base of the skull, fingertips, there's a base. And send the elbows wide and then bring them together and really try shoulders down away from the ears as much as you can. Yeah, and then find that happy medium halfway in between where you can really draw the shoulders down and feel like you're here um, right at the shoulder blade area. And just breathe for a moment. Go ahead and try to draw your navel in. Try to do that lateral breath or Pilates breath. So with that, as straight as your spine can be, make sure the ribs are drawing down and that you've got those natural curves in the spine. So just making sure the ribs aren't layering, causing the back bend. And then from there, take a deep inhale. Really let the ribs expand and exhale up and over to the right. And then we're gonna go up and over to the left. Inhaling up, exhaling up and over. Again, that your elbows aren't getting too wide, so really try to draw them in and engage the back body. And then come back to center, take a deep inhale. We're gonna exhale up and over to the right. Twist from the navel point to look up at the left elbow. Look back to center, stack the spine up straight. Take a deep inhale. Exhale up and over to the left. Look up at the right elbow. Looking back to center, stack the spine up straight. So we'll do that a few more times each side. Up and over to the right. Looking up left, back to center, stacking the spine up straight. Up and over left. Looking up to the right elbow, so twisting from the navel. Looking back center, stack the spine up straight. One more time each side. Over to the right, 
looking up at the left elbow, looking back towards center. Stacking the spine up straight. You drop the elbows down and up and over left. Look up at the right elbow and back to center and stack the spine up. Good. Shake it out a little bit. And then bring the arms up. <clears throat> and we're just going to uh, maybe find a midpoint again. So opening out wide and then drawing in. Find a midpoint. And feel how if your shoulders are relaxed, they kind of climb up towards the ears. Actively use these underarm muscles under your shoulder blade to draw the shoulders down and then relax. Yeah, can y'all feel that? It's yes. just relaxing those back muscles and then engaging them to really draw the shoulder blades down. Tiny movement that can feel like a lot of effort. So we're just getting those muscles to activate a little bit. And then shake it out, roll the shoulders each direction. Just come back up. Let's revisit that later, but let's come to hands and knees. And um, focus on your fingers being spread wide. The thumbs are reaching towards one another, right under your shoulders. Think of your elbow creases coming forward and your elbows going straight back. So the upper arms are spiraling away from one another to get that to happen. And then make sure you're not hyperextending the elbows, so add just a slight bend. So really focusing on getting those upper arms to roll out. And then do the rhomboid presses here where you're trying to squeeze or raise the shoulder blades up to the ceiling. And check in with your sit bones. Notice how they're reaching out behind me. Yeah, and the spine is staying pretty straight, just between the shoulder blades. It's raising and lowering. And then the I think Jennifer's running the vacuum. <laughs> it's, I think it's me. I've got somebody out here leaf blowing. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. No worries. All right. And then start with the tailbone. Send the tailbone up to the ceiling. Drop the belly. We'll let the head come up last. We'll do a few cat cows, but keep the abdomen in. So navel is in and up. The ribs are drawing together. It's going to limit your range of motion. And just do a few on, at your pace. Moving with your breath. Keep thinking, reach the shoulders away from the ears. And keep thinking about spiraling the upper arms away so that those elbow creases are forward. And keep checking in with your non-dominant arm. So I'm right-handed, so my left arm wants to not be as active as the right. And try to feel that each vertebrae is moving one at a time. And then maybe start the head a few times. So we were starting from the tailbone. Start from the head on your next round. And just notice if there's a difference for you.
Nice. Come back to neutral. Maybe wag it side to side a little bit. The whole body all at once. I wasn't sure what we were wagging. <laughs> yeah, the whole body left her. <laughs> it was undefined. You could have been it first. So, and then start, bring the spine back to neutral navel in and up to keep your spine neutral and think of just moving the hips this time wagging only not wagging and bringing your hip bone closer toward your um, ribs but keep that distance the same hip bone to rib and just send it left to right so it's more of just a shift instead of a wag kind of hard to do right without a wag or three to nine. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's go ahead and come back to sitting. We're gonna start with some half rollbacks. So your feet flat on the mat, and remember, try to actively push the feet away. So they're not really sliding, but it's making the legs active. Send the elbows out really wide so that your mid-back can engage. Think of using all those same muscles to draw your shoulders down from your ears. And we're gonna stack the spine up nice and straight, reaching the crown of the head to the ceiling. And notice that makes your pelvis kind of neutral. And then we're gonna tuck the pelvis, begin to round the lower spine round the spine back, engaging navel up and under the ribs. Take a breath there and then draw forehead towards the knees, keeping the ground and then untuck the pelvis to begin stacking up straight. Shoulders stay down and just move with your breath a few times. So we'll stack the spine up straight and then exhale, tuck and round back, looking towards your belly button. Head to the knees, and then untuck the pelvis to stack the spine back up, one bone at a time. <coughs> Exhaling, tuck and round back. Looking to the belly button, in and up on the navel. Forehead to knees, untuck the pelvis, stack it back up straight, drop your shoulders down. Two more times. Exhale, curl it back. Forehead to knees. Inhale, stack it back up straight. <laughs> On your exhale, tucking and rounding. Maybe round a little lower this time. Forehead to knees. And then stack it back up. Good. Let's come on down to our backs, feet to the floor. <laughs> So check in, palms down to the floor, draw the shoulders down so you're reaching your feet up towards your feet. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, just nod chin to chest without lifting the head. And then inhale, reach the chin up to the ceiling. Exhale it back, chin to chest. So just move the head a little bit, nod the chin. Move the length of the neck. Maybe rock the head side to side. Notice if you have tension in your jaw, just try to keep that relaxed. Let's take the hands up to the ceiling. And just a couple times, 
allowing the shoulder blades to connect the rib cage. We're sending the arms or fingertips to the ceiling. And then we're using the shoulder blades sliding together to draw the hands back down. So just a few times. And then begin to take the arms overhead without letting the ribs flare up to the ceiling. So really tuck those ribs down and together. And then inhale, fingertips towards the hips. Exhale, arms up and over. Just waking up those shoulders. Draw the hands towards the hips on your next time. Send them out and around, back up. So arm circles. Just flowing with your breath, keeping the navel to spine. Think of drawing the lower hip bones apart to keep the lower transversus abdominis engaged. Meet back up at the top and then reverse the circles. Send the arms overhead, draw them around, down towards the hips and back up. Nice. Nice circles. And then let's relax the arms back down. Do a few pelvic tilts. So keeping the ribs drawn together, the navel up towards the spine. Rock your tailbone down towards the mat, making a little mouse house under your low back space. And then drop your navel down towards the mat, bringing your low back down towards the mat. And just keep going back and forth. Still trying to keep the ribs knitting down and the navel engaged. And then come back to center. So hopefully your ASIS bony hip bones and your pubic bone are level with the floor. And then drop your left hip down and then your right. So trying to keep those knees still and only use those deep abdominal muscles, or the floor muscles to just rock the hips side to side. <laughs> and then meet back in the Take a deep inhale to really engage through the core. And then only using those deep abdominal muscles and that front of the right hip, we're going to draw that right leg up to tabletop, that 90 degree bend in the knee. Try to keep the core engaged, keep the body absolutely still, except for that right leg as we the toes down to the mat and then draw them back up. Making sure to keep that angle in the leg the same. So don't let that ankle come towards the buttock. Lower that foot down. Two more times. And then we're just gonna lower that foot down, check in, make sure that your foot is neutral from right to left. Re-engage through the core if you need to, draw the left foot up. So again, that 90 degree bend in the knee, keep the angle the same as you lower the toes down, raise the leg back up. So make sure your hips are glued to the mat so they're not rocking side to side, the hips are staying absolutely still as the leg lowers and lifts. If you feel any pain in your low back or pressure in your low back, imprint your low back into the mat a little more. Otherwise, it's okay to have a little space. You're using that core to protect the back. And then lower that foot down. Take a windshield wiper, check in. And knees back up to the ceiling, feet flat. Re-engage through the core, draw the ribs together. 
feel like you're sending the hip bones apart, that lower core engaging. We're gonna raise the right knee up. This time we're gonna scribe some circles on the ceiling. So go in one direction, making tiny circles. Yeah, nice. Keeping those circles small enough that the whole hip don't move. And then reverse the circles. And then lowering that leg down to the mat. Re-engage, level out the hips, and send the left knee to the ceiling. And then five circles each direction. Again, keeping those small enough that the hips are stable. Navel the spine and reverse. Nice, and just keep that left leg up, bring it back to 90 degrees. Pushing down with the arms. So you're reaching the arms away with the mid back and you're also using your triceps to really push the arms into the floor. We're gonna draw the right leg up to meet the left. And take that to just walk lower one leg and then the other. So just getting both legs involved. Yeah, make sure they don't go in towards the buttocks. Drawing the ribs down and together. Keep going here, just a few more. And draw both knees up, squeeze them into the chest. Massage the low back a little bit, rocking side to side. And then let's bring the legs back up to 90 degrees. Send the arms out to the sides. So now they're out to a T. Palms down into the mat. So the arms are pushing down to help stabilize us. And we're going to begin sending legs over to the right and then over to the left. So you can just flow with your breath, inhale, exhaling to the opposite direction. And you can go over as far as you want to here. So play around with it as long as you're able to stay engaged. And back to center, squeeze those knees back in. <coughs> Good job. Let's send the hands. If you don't need the hands, they can be long at the side, but the hands give a little support. If you put them in a diamond shape right under your sacrum, you can kind of push down with your elbows to give a little assist. So you can have your knees bent 90 degrees, or you can raise them a little straighter or all the way straight. And we're just gonna lift. Working to lower the legs down, whether they're bent or straight, and then a little lift up. So engaging that lower core. Thinking about articulating the spine and really trying to bring one vertebrae back down at a time. And squeeze that in, hug it in. And then maybe do some wide leg windshield wipers. So as wide as your yoga mat, sending the legs to one side and then the other. And then hug one knee into the chest and send one out long, or you can roll to the side and then come up. let's come back up sitting. <coughs> and 
And we're going to uh, hold behind the knees and bring the legs up. So navels to spine, you're drawing it up and under the rib cage. You're sending your shoulders down and elbows out wide. Yeah, check in here a little bit. So take the arms out. If you can, reaching them long, you can straighten the legs if you can, or you can keep them bent. Yeah, just try to rock down on the sacrum and then lower and lift the legs here. Try to keep the collarbones nice and open. Ooh, good work. Meet back up at the top. You can hold on behind the knees. Think of rolling the upper body down and then raising back up. So you're just working to get a little roll, a little rounding in the low back and then raising back up, collarbone open. So just exploring that movement in the spine, getting as much movement in the spine as you can to feel a good ab workout too though. <clears throat> and then we're gonna reach arms and legs. We're gonna lower all the way down to the mat, one bone at a time. Inhale, send the arms up and over. On your exhale, we're going to curl up through the upper body. Again, use those hands along the legs to try to roll up and over. And think here the spine is rounding, you're hinging from under the ribs to spine stretch forward to bring your forehead over your knees. But the shoulders should stay grounded on the back. So they're staying back and down. So flex through the ankles here, up the pelvis, bring the navel in and up to the spine, and roll down to the mat one bone at a time here. You can grab onto your legs to give a little assist with the hands. Roll it down, inhale, send the arms on. <coughs> Exhale, drop the sternum, chin to chest, begin to roll up one bone at a time. Bring the hands down to the legs and walk it up. And stretch it out over the legs, but the spine is stretching here. So the spine is round. Looking down at your belly button. Exhale, tuck and roll back. Arms come up and over. Exhale, curl it up, reach out through your heels, and spine stretch. And now just hinge from the hips, find a little fold. Hamstring stretch. Try to reach the sit bones back and away to flatten out the low back. And then let's stack the spine up straight from kneeling. I'm going to adjust this again. So kneeling here, get my reformer out of the way. Send the arms out wide and have your hips about uh, or your knees hip width apart. <clears throat> Think of the thighs kind of rotating away from one another, rolling out so that your butt is kind of relaxed. Those butt muscles aren't totally gripping. The arms are out, palms facing away. And we're going to engage through the core, navel in and up, twist to the left, come back to center, twist right. So if kneeling doesn't work for you, for you, all of this can be done seated. So kneeling or seated. So keep the core engaged and twist from the navel back and forth. And try to keep those hips facing forward. So try not to get the hips going with you. So it's a little bit of a push-pull.
and then relax it down. We're gonna bring the arms up here. I'm gonna use tiny weights, but the weights aren't necessary. So I'm gonna stay here. And I'm gonna bring my arms over my head in a diamond shape. I'm actually gonna sit so that you can see me, but stay kneeling if you can. So spine is nice and straight. Starting the arms here, engage those muscles under the armpits that we've been talking about. Feel your back engage. We're gonna draw the elbows down to the sides. Really give a little squeeze at the end. Feel the lats working right under the shoulder blades. And then send the hands back over the head. Drop them. Keep reaching the crown of the head up to the ceiling. Good work. Pause the arms here. So goalpost arms, 90 degree bend, straight spine. Rip. We're gonna send the arms forward and then back. Goalpost arms, keep reaching the shoulder blades down the back. Don't let them come up to the ears. Nice. Now we're gonna take those same goalpost arms. We're gonna flatten the palms down to the floor. Same movement, sending the hands together, drawing the elbows back. Yep, arms parallel with the floor. A few more here. And shake it out how the elbows and shoulders are feeling. <coughs> Good. Re engage through the core here. So draw the navel in, draw the ribs down, send the elbows right to your sides. So the elbows stay glued to your sides for this one. Palms to the ceiling, arms right out in front of you, and then send the forearms out to the sides at that 45 degree angle, draw them back in. So this one works a little rotator cuff. So just make sure none of this is hurting, should feel good. A little bit of work, but not pain. Two more. And shake the shoulders out, roll them in one direction. And then good. And then you're still kneeling, so I'm going to still stay seated so you can see. But just shaking it out a little bit, re-engage through the core. We're going to keep the palms facing in, hands maybe in a loose fist. We're going to circle the arms away as we draw them up. Ahead. Keep circling. Shoulders drawing down, so don't let the shoulders go up as your arms go up. And then circle the opposite way, take the arms down. And maybe even a little further back behind you, feel the triceps engage as the arms go behind the back. And then circle the opposite way, we're going to take the arms back up. Keep the shoulders though reaching down and together. Don't let the shoulders or pop up or the ribs pop up. And then just reversing, circling down and behind you, engage the triceps. Start circling the opposite way. Draw the ribs down, draw the shoulders down as the hands come up. And then reverse, arms come down. And behind, feel the triceps. Reverse the circles one more time. Let's 
circle up. Shoulders go down, ribs go down. Reverse circles, send the arms down. That is really hard. Yeah, it feels good, right? <laughs> Woo! Stick it out. Yeah, send it up here. Come on. Shake it out, and then we're going to do some twisting. <coughs> Still kneeling, if that feels all right to you. Arms are going to come out in front. So palms are facing one another. Hips are going to stay forward. You're pushing the hips forward. You're trying to keep the hips right where they at, where they're at. We're going to twist from the navel this time. As we draw left elbow and draw like we're pulling a bow, you can look towards the hand. The right hand stays right where it's at. And then we draw the left arm back. Yeah, so you inhale here, exhale, twist from the navel as the right elbow draws back. And then inhale it back to center. Left elbow. I'm looking at my hand as I draw them back. Exhaling, right elbow draws back. Inhaling, center. Exhaling, left elbow. My gong really likes this one. It wants to get in there with us. Let's do one more each side. Left elbow and right. Shake it out. Woo. <coughs> one more. One more for the arms. So they're out, palms facing the ceiling, right at shoulder height. Shoulders are drawing down the back. And we're gonna bend the elbows up to 90, send the arms out. So a little bicep work here. So keep thinking elbows are squeezing towards one another. The elbows aren't going out wide. I don't even see any of that though, it looks good. And you're trying to keep them parallel with the floor. Mine are wanting to raise up and do crazy things. How about y'all? Two more. And shake it out. Woo. Did Jennifer work arms today too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely got the memo. You gotta love it when we're in sync in our torture. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so come back down on your back. Actually, let's come onto our belly. <laughs> Give our arms a break. So just take the hands under the forehead in that diamond shape. Adjust again. <laughs> so Navel is to spine, your pubic bone is drawing down to the mat. And push your feet down into the mat. Feel how that activates uh, the back of the legs, the hamstrings, draws your kneecaps up off the mat. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. And as we inhale, we're rolling the marble away to lift the head. Find a nice spinal extension, looking just out past your fingertips, and then roll the marble back towards you. Forehead comes down to the mat. So just flowing with your breath. You can keep the arms planted. You can begin to take the arms with you, like your hands are glued to your forehead. Inhaling up, elbows out wide, shoulders down away from the ears, and then drawing down. Two more. Shh. 
Hands under shoulders, push back, find a child's pose. <clears throat> Shake it out, kind of well deserved at this point, right? And then stacking the spine back up straight, walk the hands in, come back up seated. Come either sitting cross-legged or send your left uh, leg out in front of you and your right leg behind you. So it's kind of that deer um, position. In Pilates, we call it Z-sit because the legs are in kind of a Z position. And then we're gonna take the arms back up, find that middle point where the shoulders are drawing down and take a deep inhale first, and then exhale up and over to the right. Try to keep that left hip grounded. And then we're gonna come up and over in the opposite direction. So you can lower the left arm down if you need to and drop it over to the left. Think of keeping both hips really heavy to the ground. Inhaling back up, <coughs> exhaling right. Inhaling center, exhaling up and over to the left. This time take your top arm with you. Find a nice lateral bend in the spine. You can even drop down to the left elbow. Circle that arm a little bit. If that feels good to you, send it forward and then send it back. You can follow the hand with the eyes. Keep trying to ground that right hip down into the mat. Try not to let it pop up too high. And then come back to, to center, but still in that lean and we're gonna inhale, stack it back up. <clears throat> Shake it out, we're gonna switch sides. So the right leg is in front of you, left leg is going back, or you're cross-legged. So make your hips happy, for sure. Notice how one side probably feels a little different. Send the arms back up. Inhale, nice tall spine. First, let's go towards that left leg. So up and over to the left. Keep drawing the ribs down. And then send it up and over to the right. You can drop that right arm down. Keep the left hip grounded. Inhaling up. Try not to push up too hard with your arm. Up and over left. Inhaling center, draw the shoulders down. Send it up and over right. Dropping that right arm down. Find a nice lateral bend, drop the left hip, keep it reaching towards the mat, send that top arm, that left arm up, really reach out through the fingertips, but reach the shoulder blade down the back. And then send the arm forward, round it up and overhead, sending it out behind you. And just keep rolling front to back. Feel a good stretch. Make sure your shoulder feels happy. You should be getting a really good stretch to that shoulder blade. Think of not dumping into that bottom side body. So your right body, you're still lifting up in a way. And then come back to that center point where you're looking forward, draw the hand back down, that left hand behind the head. You're pushing the head back into that hand. And then use the core, initiate from the core to inhale, stack it back up center. And up and over, opposite side one more time, towards the left. Ah, stack it back up straight. <clears throat> Good work. Let's come down, back onto the belly.
and elbows right under the shoulders. Draw the shoulders down. Spread the fingers wide. Push the feet down into the mat. Pushing the pubic bone down and pulling that navel in and up to the spine. Breathe here a moment. And then float one leg, push down with the other. Maybe the right leg lifts, left leg pushes down. And then switch, left foot lifts, right foot pushes into the mat. Feel the back body engage. Float both legs if you can. And if you need to keep them lowered, that's okay too. If you can, float them. We're gonna inhale and then kick, kick right leg, reach along, kick, kick left. Just moving with your breath. Keep looking just out past your fingertips. Extra challenge is to keep the legs floating up off the mat. Keep the shoulders reaching down the back and keep the neck long. Nice. Push back, find your child pose. <clears throat> Rock the hips side to side, massage the low back, kind of check in with it. And then come to hands and knees. Do just a little bit of that cat cow. Elbow creases forward, upper arms rotating, articulating one bone at a spine at a time through your spine. And we're gonna come up to standing. We're gonna meet in standing. So if down dog is available to you right now, push up, find your down dog or up stretch. Otherwise, just come up and meet us in standing. So feel out through your down dog for a second. Push the weight back over the heels and try to reach the sit bones up and back. Really focus on those sit bones. Walk the feet in towards the heels. And then we're gonna roll up. So we're gonna push down through the heels, engage through the navel point. Tuck the pelvis under when you begin to lift. Keep thinking spine is rounding. Look up to your navel the whole way up. Shoulders relaxing down. Shake it out a minute. Okay, so from here, standing, let's go ahead and do one more uh, roll down while we're here, actually. So your feet are hip width apart. Think of the outside edges of your feet being parallel with your yoga mat. We're going to keep the shoulders relaxed as we draw the navel in, we draw the ribs down. Exhale, draw your <coughs> sternum back. Begin to bring chin to chest. Keeping the navel engaged, roll down one bone at a time like you're rolling up and over a beach ball. Hinging from the ribs and not the hips to keep the spine nice and round. Push through the heels, tuck the pelvis under, begin to stack back up. Shaking the shoulders out at the top and then rolling down one bone at a time. Keep the hips or the uh, quads kind of rolling out to the sides as you roll down. Curl the pelvis under, navel in and up, roll it back up.
Nice, and shake it out. So a few times here, just take a minute to sit down without using hands and then stand back up, no hands. Just trading out how you do it each time. Nice. And then we're going to come back standing. So I'm going to aim you at my feet. We're going to work on the outer hip a little bit. In theory, I am. <coughs> so I'm not sure you can see my feet. But standing hip width apart, outside edges parallel with your yoga mat. Think of your thighs rolling to the outside. Think of relaxing through the quads as much as you can. Relax the booty as much as you can. So this outer hip area is what's holding you up. So keep trying to relax, keep the booty relaxing. We're gonna use our right hip to begin to raise up. So we're gonna ground through the right heel Make sure your foot is parallel with your mat. Keep your hips level, shoulders level. Push down through the right foot to raise up the left. Keep the left foot flexed and then lower it back down. So you're just raising and lowering a little bit. Some of you have done this with me so you know what's going on. All or if you don't. So you're trying to keep the same distance between that hip and right rib as you push up. So you're not rounding up and over, you're lifting up. And then lift and hold, flexing through that left foot, the left foot's lifted, you're pushing down through that right foot to lift up. We're gonna send that left foot forward and back. And imagine I'm there with you, keeping your hips level and your shoulders level. So just notice if you're really turning away or turning towards. And you can get your arms involved in it if you want to, or you can keep them on your hips. Be feeling that right now in your left hip or your right hip. Yeah. Yeah. And then draw, draw that left foot down, shake it out a little. So know that you can add to that. If you have a yoga block, you can stand on the block and add to that. But we're just going to move on over to the left side. So I'm checking in again, making sure that my feet are parallel with the yoga mat. Make sure a little pigeon toe. So it's really more than you think even. And then draw the hips away. Again, check back in, try to relax the quads and the booty. Try to engage those upper hips, hip flexors. So this time we're gonna push down through the left foot. Even think of getting the left toes involved. So I'm lifting them, I'm spreading them wide and I'm setting them back down. And then I'm going to lift up, flexing my right ankle. And now I have a tougher time with my left hip. So think drawing, pushing straight down to lift up. Don't let the hips go out the side. And you're just lifting, lowering. And I have to actively shift my hips to the right to not get my left hip to push out to the side of this hip. So just kind of check in. Notice if this one feels a little harder for you. So 
Raising and lowering. Again, check back in. Keep the hips facing forward. Keep the shoulders facing forward. A good thing that helps with that is the eye gaze, right? So I'm looking right at you guys, looking right at my monitor to keep my body forward, facing forward. And then begin to walk it out. You can keep the hands to hips or you can take them with you. Again, no dump. Keep that left side body lifting up, reaching up, not dumping down. Oh, my left hip's really feeling it. How's yours feeling? Woo! Keep it going. Can't even stay straight. Woo! A couple more times. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. And shake it out. Little dance party. All right, take a deep inhale. Maybe send the arms up and overhead this time. We're just going to roll down, but I'm just trying to straighten my arms. So if you want to engage more ab, the arms come up overhead. And then we draw chin to chest, draw the sternum back behind you, and roll it down. One bone at a time. This time at the very end, we are going to hinge from the hips. That feels good to you. You can bend the knees if you need to. Just find a forward fold. Grab opposite elbows. You can rock the hips side to side if that feels good. Think of typewritering. Meaning you're keeping the hips the same distance from the ribs and you're just shifting left to right instead of bending and really dragging the tail. And really take a minute here to reach the sit bones up and back. Get as much stretch through the hamstring as you can by trying to lift those sit bones up to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. Feel the back of the knees open. Yeah. Yeah, feel the quads rotate out. Don't overdo it for the hamstrings. But notice how when you really have your feet, the outside edges parallel, you're reaching the quads away from one another and trying to open up the knees and lift the tailbone. You're really getting a true hamstring stretch there. And then just lower the hands down, bend the knees. We're going to finish in tabletop position. But we're just going to think of releasing here. So let the belly fall to the floor. So no more ab engagement. We're all done with that business. So think of letting your sit bones separate. Feel like you're creating space through the sit bones, through the hips just by relaxing. So relaxing the pelvic floor, letting the belly drop down. We'll bend in the elbow if you need it. But just keep picturing that the core is just melting. Like you're growing heavier and heavier. And shift it left and right, the whole body. Mm -hmm. 
And that's it for today, ladies. You did great work. Thank you.